Thank you, Julie. Last March, shortly before the first lockdown, I came to the WOW Festival at the South Bank Centre. In her introductory speech, Jude asked us to put up our hands if we could imagine a world in which violence against women didn't exist. The reaction was mixed. Some hands flew up, some remained firmly planted on laps. Most of us glanced at each other, rather taken aback. Dared we even dream of a world without rape and sexual abuse? Or were we too indoctrinated into believing that violence against women is normal? Just one of those things, part and parcel, of being born female. This country has been appalled and saddened by the loss of women to violence this year. On average, one woman is killed by a man every three days. Sarah Everard, Sabina Nessa, Wenjing Lin, Jatika Goyle, and Benelin Burke are names which, with all the others, must never be forgotten. Each one of these women endured unimaginable torment, and their loved ones who are left behind continue to suffer in the wake of their deaths. On the 30th of September, Sarah Everard's mother stood before her daughter's killer to give her searing victim impact statement. She said, if Sarah had died because of an illness, she would have been cared for. We could have looked after her and been with her. If she had died because of an accident, people would have tried to help. There would have been kindness. But there is no comfort to be had, no consoling thought in the way Sarah died. In her last hours, she was faced with brutality and terror, alone with someone intent on doing her harm. The thought of it is unbearable. I am haunted by the horror of it. I know that all of you today join me in paying tribute to all these precious lives that have been brutally ended and in renewing our commitment to do everything we can about the end of violence against women. The challenges are immense. The Crime Survey of England and Wales shows that 144,000 women were victims of rape or attempted rape in the last year for which these figures were available. This equates to roughly 16 of the most serious sexual offences every hour. 16 every hour. On the same day that Wayne Cousins was arrested, a survey was published stating that 86% of young women in the UK have been sexually harassed in a public place. This included women who had been followed and coerced into sexual activity, all while in a public place. Even more shockingly, of these young women, 96% of them did not report the incidents. It is, as almost all women know, a deeply disturbing experience to be sexually harassed. Yet somehow, a culture of silence has grown up in which these women conceal their experiences of such offences. Why? There are, of course, many explanations, but there is one significant reason on which we are focusing today, shame. Shame is one of the most powerful emotions felt after sexual violation. The victims feel invaded and dirty, weakened by having been put in a position of helplessness by someone stronger, possibly by somebody, someone whom she previously trusted. Often this sense of shame causes the victim to blame herself, mistakenly take responsibility for the crime and want to hide away from others. 
And yet, she's done nothing wrong. I said these challenges were immense. However, the forthcoming festival gives us hope that they can be overcome. There are, I believe, two important steps we can take as we aim to create the world from violence against women that Jude has pointed us towards. Firstly, we have shameless. Together, today, let us resolve to support, support survivors to be shameless and not take on misplaced feelings of stigma. Through speaking up about our experiences, we break the wall of silence that allows perpetrators to go unpunished and increases the feeling of isolation that so many survivors describe. Secondly, we need to get the men in our lives involved in this movement. We do not in any way hold all men responsible for sexual violence, but we do need them all aboard to tackle it. After all, rapists are not born, they're constructed. And it takes an entire community, male and female, to dismantle the lies, words and actions that foster a culture in which sexual assault is seen as normal and in which it shames the victim. So let's all leave here today and try and get the men in our lives to participate in building a shameless society. Because how many more women must be harassed, raped or murdered before we truly unite to forge a violence-free world? Thank you all very much.